What's up, everyone, and welcome to the very first uh, podcast of Variant uh, Quarantine Edition. So we're, we're both from home, Tim. <laughs> You're in your office. I'm in my, my man cave. <laughs> it's like, this is like the, the, the thing that everyone's been doing, I guess, like Jimmy Kimmel, Fallon, and all of them are like shooting out of their house now because we're quarantined. <laughs> literally, yeah, literally everyone is a, is a YouTuber now. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty funny. I was watching because uh, Fallon's shooting out of his house, like I said uh, a second ago, and it's funny to see how like even like these late night show hosts, even though they like do stuff on TV every night, they don't necessarily know how to vlog or shoot stuff out of their homes because they're like filming stuff portrait and not landscape. I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> it just shows like they're two completely different things. Yeah, they're not used to it at all. The rest of us YouTubers are like, you know, listen, you need work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, like we've been saying over and over, we hope everyone's staying safe uh, and healthy right now during you know these trying times. And I hope this this podcast and all the content we're bringing you guys is bringing you some joy and curing you from boredom during this time. Everyone's on their couch. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, like we told you guys, we were we're going to continue to create content as much and as often as possible during this entire period, who, however long this lasts. Hopefully, it's not uh, too long. It's just as long as we, we need it to be, so we can, uh, you know, stamp this whole virus situation out as quickly as possible. But um, you know, there's, it's it's definitely a crazy time, and it's a crazy time for everybody. We're all kind of dealing with the exact same thing at the exact same time. Um, in different ways, obviously, but it's such a unique situation in that way that everyone simultaneously is having kind of a, a universal experience. Um, For sure. So it's, but yeah, we're we're going to be here doing this. I do want to take a second uh, before we really get into anything, and just from us here at Variant uh, Triune Films and Variant, um, just to say thank you to all the many healthcare workers and first responders yes. and the people that are working in the grocery stores and the warehouse and the, the truckers that are just keeping supply lines going as best as possible. And all the, oh my gosh, all the many people that are still going into work at restaurants every day to do the takeout and the delivery and all these things to make sure that things are running as, as much as possible for all the things that we need to keep running during all of this. There's a lot of people that are actually putting their lives at risk. Um, mm -hmm. you know, while we're all sitting at home and, and we all owe them an incredible debt of gratitude. So from us to all of you, many, many, many thanks. Uh, it's, it's, thanks doesn't even really feel like enough, especially uh, for you, uh, healthcare workers and the police and firemen and, you know, all, all the paramedics and the EMTs that are going and, you know, dealing with people who are dealing with, you know, incredible symptoms, you know, uh, just on a daily basis. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think this definitely put in perspective, you know, everyone always, you know, thanks to doctors, firefighters and policemen, right, and rightfully so. But this put in perspective sure. the fact that, like, you know, we take for granted even the everyday stuff, like all the people who get us our groceries, all the people who make sure, you know, we get our Amazon packages. Because, with you know, without, all, you know, all these drivers and people working at grocery stores and restaurants, we wouldn't have food. We wouldn't have that package of whatever we need delivered to us in the mail. So this puts yeah, in perspective right. how much we do need each other in everyone. It's, you know, it's a circle of life. It, it functions, you know, you know, we all function together and you, you hit one chain, everything, you know, one link in the chain falls apart, everything starts falling apart. So it, it definitely, exactly you know, right. even for me, it was like, wow, you know, we just, you just get caught up and you're not on purpose. You just get caught up and used to everyday life and we're spoiled, especially here, you know, in America and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just like, wow, you know, these people are, are like, you know, to what you just said, you know, they're going to work and stuff like that in a time where, you know, the news and everyone's telling everyone to stay home and they're out there, you know, putting their health on the line. So, yeah, like you said, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you know, to everyone working in the food industry, driver industry, just making sure life goes on as normal as possible. Yeah, even I mean, my father, he's an electrical contractor and he's they're considered essential, you know, that's the essential business, essential workers. And so he's at work today and he's in his 60s. Um, so sure. you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that are, that are out there just trying to keep, um, keep our society and keep our system running as much as possible in the middle of all this. There's, it really is as a, in a, as a whole, only about a third of the country is sitting at home. Um, everyone else, because you're, again, you're, you're talking about all the grocery store workers, you're talking about bankers, people that are working at the banks to make sure that if we need to get our cash, we can still do that. It's crazy when you think about it, like even like sanitation and stuff, guys who come pick up your trash and stuff. Imagine if that got shut down, you'd, you'd be, you know, especially right. since we're home, the amount of trash we're compiling every day, just sitting at home. If that just yeah. piled and piled without them picking it up, 
it just yeah. really puts things in perspective. Yeah, that's a great one to add is the sanitation workers that are coming. Because if you think about it, like if people are sick and they're throwing their stuff away, you know yeah. what I mean? That's potentially contaminated. And, you know, so that's a risk for them. So just to everyone who is out there and just continuing to, to bust their butt and, and to uh, in many ways put their, their health at risk, like you said, um, just thanks a million. And uh, we're all going to owe you quite a bit. We're all going to owe you a beer or something when this is done. <laughs> right. Beers all around. It's gonna be um, like but na- see, national uh, treat 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 your workers to a fear day. <laughs> but uh, speaking of all that stuff, though, this is obviously causing a lot of stuff to shut down. All the non-essential stuff, like everything we just mentioned, is all the essential essential stuff we need to you know function with everyday life. But you know, as much as we love comic books, that is not essential to everyday life, right? That is definitely right. something that could be paused. And you know, because of everything going around and the strains in the delivery industry right now. Diamond Distribution, who is the sole proprietor for distributing comics to the country and world for the most part. Well, the country, let's say. I'm not sure if they're, you know, not, you know, global. But for the country, uh, has shut down for now, indefinitely. Um, yeah. They are the, <clears throat> they have shut down indefinitely. They are no longer shipping new comics to comic book shops, which in turn is causing the comic shops to close. Now, a lot of comic book shops, depending where you were in the country, were already forced to shut down because, again, that's not an essential business. But there's still a good amount of the country where they were allowed to be open. But even those guys aren't getting the new comics because, again, only Diamond is the distributor. And if they're not shipping new product, no comic book shop in the country is getting comics. So this is put. This is a big hit to the comic book industry right now. As we yeah. know, this pandemic, you know, is you know going to have massive effects to our economy and small businesses. And the comic book industry is definitely one that's going to take a hit, particularly the brick and mortar comic book shops. There's been a lot of talk of how they're going to deal with this, you know, being closed for two weeks, a month, you know, with not getting any sales, how they're going to make rent. And a lot of people are saying, you know, a lot of the shop owners are saying, please don't just do direct to digital because that was the obvious thing, right? They're like, well, you still, you still get your new comic books through digital for the time being. But a lot of the shop owners are saying, if you do that, that's not going to give our readers incentive to also want to buy are books that have been stalled in the pipeline. Sure, you'll have the collectors who want the print, but the majority of people will be like, well, I already read that. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? That's gonna cut a lot of their sales. So there's lots of craziness going on and uncertainty on what's gonna happen. Marvel, DC, all the big publishers haven't really even said at the time of shooting this uh, podcast, whether they're gonna continue to, to release digitally or they're just gonna halt new comics and stories in entirety, meaning no new digital and no print. So we don't know yet. And that is, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's right in line with what we talked about on our last podcast when we kind of went into detail on, you know, what is the world going to look like when all of this is over, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things, there's so much uncertainty right now just across the board. The Senate is passing, uh, the Congress in general uh, is passing this huge, huge uh, stimulus package and relief package. Um, that is going to help out many businesses that are going to get hit really hard, um, including companies, you know, like uh, comic book distributors and and uh, movie theaters and and stuff like that. Um, it, there's going to be a lot of help, uh, and I personally don't think this is the last relief bill we're going to see. Uh, we're probably going to see at least one more, maybe more than that, uh, depending upon uh, upon how long this goes on, right? So. But regardless, the, the, the amount of damage that we've already done just by bringing so many different industries to a complete and utter standstill um, so that everyone can sit home and kind of social distance and hopefully tamp out this virus situation, um, just what we've done so far to battle this thing uh, is going to have consequences. It's going to have economic repercussions. And we are, you know, trying to soften the blow in terms of the impact it's going to have on, you know, employees and workers and businesses so that when this is over, they can kind of start back up wherever it is. But there's going to be, uh, so there's going to be residual effects, you know, uh, and what those are going to look like, particularly for the industries and or segments of industries um, like the comic book industry, like the entertainment industry that were already on that precipice that edge in so many different ways due to transformational technologies. It's going to be really interesting to see how this all continues to play out and cut, you know, diamond select 
bringing everything to a standstill, you can't help but wonder, you know, is this going to create that question in publishers' minds of, we can't be held hostage like this if this were to ever happen again. You know, this is this could destroy us completely. Yes, right this time, you know, we might survive it. But if this happens again in the near future, in other words, if a year from now, you know, this coronavirus, you know, if it is a seasonal type virus and it flares up again next year and they have to, you know, battle this thing back again. I mean, obviously the hope is there's a there's some kind of a vaccine or medications mm -hmm. that will help us, you know, really kind of reduce that. But let's just say in the event, you know, because they have to war game that out. That's what these companies and these executives do is they work and say, if this happens again, even if it's not coronavirus, it's something else, uh, you know, I don't know that we survive around two. Uh, so they have to think, OK, what's the most efficient way? We know things are going more and more digital. Is it wise for us to just, you know, take a hint and start, you know, streamlining this now and move that, in a, in, you know, move that adoption? Uh, mm -hmm. rate at, to, to just ramp that up to a maximum speed. And, and, you know, we don't know that for sure. I, you know, I believe, and I think I know you do too, is that we're going to get physical comic books back when this is over. How, how much we get back and how long that remains the case um, will yet to be seen. But uh, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out once it does get lifted. Once it, you know, they're able to start publishing again, um, because they're going to they're going to be licking their wounds just as far as the economic impact of all this for months to come. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've I've said, you know, on the show and on the podcast for a while now that it's only a matter of time before the comic book industry, the comic book industry changes. Uh, we've been talking about it a lot, you know, all the yeah. changes at DC, uh, you know, even Marvel and stuff like that. It's. It's just, it's the natural evolution of life. You know, it's not just comic yeah. books. We have, I use the analogy all the time. Same thing happened with music. You know, we had CDs, tapes, and records. Then we hit the digital age with like Napster and iTunes and all that stuff. Now, most mm -hmm. music, I would, I would say like easily, you know, like 80% of music is consumed via like di a digital file, like an MP3 file on your phone, on your iPad, you know, some, something of that sort. And even with movies, it's kind of happening. We see that, we see the same thing because of this pandemic happening with movies right now, even more so. The theaters are shut down. A lot of the studios are, you know, going straight to video on demand. And then right. some of the bigger movies, they're like, no, we're going to hold like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has been paused till August. Uh, Warner Brothers officially came out the other day and said, look, we're going to move it to August. Hopefully everything's cleared up by then. This was Pat Patty Jenkins said on Twitter, this movie was meant to see in theater. So they're doing that with right. some stuff, but then other stuff like Trolls 2, that's got a straight to video mm -hmm. on demand release. Net wasn't even in the theater for a week. It will only ever live digital now. So, yeah. it, you know, which the movie theaters, just like the brick and mortar comic book shops are like, hey man, what, that's not good for our business though. What, what, what's going on? And, you know, I always think there's going to be a place for print comic books. Like I've been, you know, right here, I got a Batman Adventures too. I've got this in like 93, 94, still have it. I love print comic books. Had this for, you know, two decades now, always will. Um, so there's always going to be a fan base for that. There's always going to be people who want that. I'm one of those. But at the same time, I think the majority of people would rather digital. Because as much as I love print and I still do collect them, I've said it all the time, I do read a lot of digital. I think I actually do read more digital because of our show and what we do. It's just easier, you know, to, to have everything digital, especially when I'm reading late at night. I'm in bed. It's 11 o'clock at night with my wife. I just pick up my iPad. She's watching her show and I'm reading, you know, I don't have to yeah. turn the light on. I'm reading something on my on my iPad. So it, it's just a natural progression of things. And I'm just worried that this is going to be that push to make it happen, you know, to be a drastic change and not kind of ease into it. Like yeah. not the, so the comic book shops won't be prepared. It won't be gradual where, you know, everything evolves slowly and everyone kind of has their, their their corners in place and stuff like that. But with this, I'm not saying it's going to be. But it could very much be like a oh a drastic almost overnight change where now you're talking about almost overnight the majority of sales are digital. I don't know how quickly that would happen because I do know uh, that the majority of the comic book industry survives because of print. The majority, the way the the number of print sales still outweigh the digital sales by a lot. But in sure. times of need and necessity, those diehard fans. Uh, who want to read their stories, who want to know Punchline's origin that's supposed to be coming out in the next few weeks here, and all the, the stories that are, you know, have been lined up for the year. We want to know what's going to happen. If we can't get our print, 
sure we like collecting but we still like the stories that's why that's first and foremost yep. that's why we we read right because you want the story so you're gonna buy yep. the digital and that's in turn i don't know what the percentage is gonna be but that is gonna draw a lot more people to digital because they'll be like oh i've been doing this for two months i kind of like it maybe it is a little easier i don't you know save space i don't have to drive to the shops and you know it's just i'm not picking one side or another it just seems like that seems the way to be that seems to be the way life goes with everything movies yeah. digital comics so it's kind of sad and there i think like like movie theaters there's always going to be movie theaters i just think in the coming years it's going to be a little less you know what i mean yeah. where back in the day there was a movie theater on every single corner this is just my personal opinion but i feel like in the coming years you know there's just not going to be as many regals in cinemarks everywhere and i think the same thing has been happening with comic book shops and that's only sadly going to continue to happen but there always will be a market I just don't think it's going to be as big as it was in the 90s and stuff like that. So, you know, for the diehards, I'd say don't fret. You're still going to have your print. It's just not going to be in an abundance like it was in, you know, the boom in the 90s and stuff like that. And this could be, you know, the publishers could use this as a big push to be like, look, digital. Because that's also going to be cheaper for them, right? From a business standpoint, they don't have to worry about printing, paper, shipping. It's a freaking file they upload to the cloud. You buy it for your three bucks, which is the same price as a print comic. That's another thing. Digital is the same price as print, which is kind of weird, but that's for another conversation. So they're still making their three dollars. So, you know, there's a lot of things leaning into the favor of digital right now. Love it or hate it. And, uh, you know, it seems like this could be the dawn of a new age. Yeah. You know, again, we don't we don't know what it's going to look like. It, it, it definitely is going to have we're going to get print comic books back again when this. Is oh, all for over. sure. For sure. sure. Um, so it's not going to be an immediate. What I what I really think is it will do is it's going to speed the adoption uh, of digital only. Because, again, people are going to want the comics. And if the only way you can access most of them is digitally, well, then they're going to just get them digitally. That's just mm -hmm. the way it'll, it'll be. Um, the question is, how quickly will the industry force that that move, right? Uh, because in the at the end of the day, these comic book publishers are businesses, and it's about survivability. So if they're mm -hmm. looking at this and they're saying, "Look, everything is shifting. We're already seeing a certain percentage of our sales shift toward digital a as it is," and then there's all these other potential issues, you know, where where comic book shops are going out of because that's the other big problem, right? Is that how how hard of a hit are comic book shops going to take during all of this? Right. Oh, for sure. How long they have to stay closed. They were already struggling heavily throughout the country. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, well, I would say the United States, I won't speak for the world, but uh, they were already struggling heavily throughout the country. Uh, so it's how big of a hit, how many of them are going to be able to survive this. And if you have this constantly shrinking number of comic book shops that are even ordering the print copies, you know, what do you do to offset that to keep that a viable? uh aspect of your your publishing side you know so it's it's just they're mounting problems and it, and they're gonna they're sitting down they're gonna say you know again this is about survivability what is going to allow us to stay a viable industry for the next 10 20 30 years and mm -hmm. with the direction of everything they're saying look we just need you know there's a very good chance in the very near future uh and this situation is going to expedite this idea of just ripping the band-aid off and saying, okay, we just need to, we need to figure out the most efficient way to keep certain level of print, um, you know, whether it be for collectible collectors or novelty, um, but the start moving heavily and rapidly in the in the direction of uh, digital. But I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of worried for the con I have friends that own comic book shops, so I'm kind of worried to see what the publishers are going to do because again, as of recording this. Uh, we don't like Marvel, DC, all the big guys haven't made an announcement of what they're doing. So technically we don't know if, you know, next week here or whatever, if, you know, we could still buy the new Batman digitally. We know mm -hmm. we can't get it print because Diamond stopped distribution. So I'm curious and I don't even know, I'm kind of wrestling in my head too, like where I fall as like, would I want all published, you know, all publishers to not even release digital comics right now and just wait for the comic book shops or they have to do, though. You think they do? Well, because here's the thing. I've heard things go around where owners and people are like, well, what if you do this? What if what now they implement something with comicsology, let's say, where let's say next week the new Batman comes out, right? 
with buying the new uh, Batman, that they give you DC, each publisher would have to do this, gives you a code to redeem a print copy at your local comic book shop later on. So when buying that digital, you're also getting a code that would allow you to somehow, that they send, you know, they work it out with comic book shops. So you could bring that to a comic book shop and redeem that book there later when they're shipping physical copies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that would work. I don't know, the, you know, how crazy the logistics would be. That seems like something that could be, you know, doable. Uh, I do think, though, if they, let's say, next week here, we still get new comic books digitally on Comixology. Uh, that is going to be a big hit for the for the shop owners, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. And that I feel like that kind of isn't... It's, it's the same thing with the movies, right? Releasing movies straight at home and not letting the theaters have their release, that's a big hit to them. It's the same thing with the comic book right. shops, where, you know... I, you know, I, I feel like maybe we should just pause for a month or two, however it takes, you know what I mean? Because, the question again, is, I'm a big collector. That? I, you know, that, that, that is the that's, question. That's I mean, again, question. I don't know the, I don't, why... I don't know the, I don't know the logistics of it. I, I'm just, as a collector, as, you know, a person who ha- who loves this industry, who knows many people who own their own shops, I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, if these bigger companies like Marvel and DC can withstand to pause revenue for a month it would be really nice because you're helping the industry as a whole because the comic book shops are you know that's what gets the books out that's it's like one of the the biggest pegs in the industry you know what i mean so it's like let's help each other out but again you got to look at both sides can boom studios can idw can marvel not have any sales of new comic books for a month two months you got to look at both sides so i i don't know you know in the middle my guess, here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my guess is that they're going to try to thread the needle. You know, you know, we know a lot of people in the industry and on both sides, both on the comic book shop side and in, on the actual publisher side. Mm-hmm. And there, there are points to be had on both ends, like you said. But again, it com- it comes down to survivability and viability. Um, the shops are going to take a hit, but the shops would not exist. If it what if the pop publishers survive, if the publishers if the publishers don't find a way to stay viable, you know, again, depending on how long all of this goes on, um, but in the interim, they're gonna they're they probably already are looking at this and probably already have a, a relative uh, knowledge of how long they can wait before they need to get sales going on some level, and how long they can pause their issues, the release of new issues before they need to start finding different ways of doing it, whether that's shipped to home, you know, for those that want the hard copy. Well, I'll actually take that one further because a lot of creators have been taking to online saying, hey, look, we still got to make money too. This is their job. Being a comic book writer, being an artist, being an inker, being a colorist, that's your job. That's how, that is how you make your mortgage. So yep. if they're not even releasing books digitally, that means these artists, these writers and creators mm-hmm. have no work. So, yep. like you said, it, there's always two sides. You know, this this case, there's like three, four sides. And, you know, yep. it, everyone kind of has to come in some sort of agreement to see what's viable for everyone. But in the end, like you said, without the publisher, without the creators, there is no comic book shops. If you don't have a creator to write Batman, to write Daredevil, and you right. don't have a publisher to publish that and send them to the comic book shops, there is no comic shop. So that, that's why I'm a little concerned with the with the state of brick and mortars right now because you know I like to be optimistic but it, it is worrisome for sure especially how the industry was going even before this and uh, yeah. I, it's definitely not ideal. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're gonna get some relief, you know, for, through these government uh, you know uh, aid packages that are being put together. They're gonna get some relief, um, but again. Uh, you know, I think that there is more because they, if they have to stay closed, the brick and mortar comic book shop, if they've got to stay closed, they're going to stay closed for, you know, whatever period of time uh, is required of them. Mm-hmm. There's nothing they can do about that. Whereas, you know, and so whatever they're going to work out, whether the, the comic book publishers are putting out new weight to put out new releases or they just say, OK, we put out new releases digitally while everything was closed down so people still have access to new new titles and then we're going to distribute the hard copies because people who want those hard copies are still going to want them once they're released you know what i'm saying so they might Mm -hmm. just wait but they can at least have some revenue going not just for the publishers themselves but all the creators and all the keep the industry alive and going 
and viable and as best as possible in the interim. Um, so I, I, it, for me, if I'm, you know, from a business side, uh, you know, it seems highly likely and, and that you have to, you have to keep going on some front and then look for, look for fun and exciting ways to bring back hard copy to the shops. Um, when all of this lifts and starts for sure, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, you do like special variant releases of the issues, you know, that's like, you know, the quarantine lift variant cover, (laughs) you know, whatever, (laughs) uh, to, to, to bring collectors back in and to get the, I think people are going to be excited to freaking do that anyway, when all this is over, everybody's so, you know, going to be so sick of being trapped in their house. Uh, you know, every freaking store, restaurant, <laughs> everything's going to be packed <laughs> when all this is over because everybody's going to be so excited to get out of the house. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I just I can't imagine this going on for, you know, three, four, five, six weeks, you know, two months even. You know, in some mm-hmm. cases, they're talking about freaking eight weeks. Uh, I can't imagine that being the case and the publishers not and just sitting still. Yeah, well, I know even uh, locally, one of uh, the local com- one of my local comic book shops around here, uh, Keith Comics. Some of the things they're doing to you know kind of weather this is they're doing gift certificates. They're saying you know you spend forty dollars in a gift certificate, we'll actually give you that forty dollars. We'll give you fifty dollars in store credit, so you get an extra ten for your four. So forty dollars is actually fifty in store credit, and then you know that that way when they get shipments in, now you have money to buy all your comic books. So it it kind of so, you know, if you have a pull list at your comic book shop and you know you go every once a month, two weeks, you're probably spending that forty, fifty dollars anyway. So, you know, a good way to help them out is basically getting a gift certificate, giving them the money now because they need it for overhead and stuff like yeah. that. And then you're, you know, you're helping your local business and your comic book shop, especially if you have a pull list with them. That means, you know, you're probably buddies with uh, the people who work there. So I think that's clever. And I'm just, you know, in times like this, it definitely makes people creative because out of necessity, you have to be right. So I'm curious to see all the new inventive things that are, that are going to happen. And, you know, this is definitely something we got to keep an eye out because, you know, the way things have been going in the world right now, things have been changing day by day. So, you know, this could even look very different, you know, next week, two weeks from yeah, now. Course, so, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely keep everyone uh, updated with this because this is, you know, this is the, the heart <laughs> of, of what we do. This is the new books without, you know, yeah. new stories. Then we're just looking at back issues forever. So, but, you know, that's not going to happen. We're going to continue to get new stories. How yeah. that's going to be, how we're going to get it, you know, we'll see how things evolve. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting no matter which way you slice it. And and as we have said many, many, many times on all forms of uh, variant, um, you know, as much as you can and as often as you can, um, you know, we got to look for ways to support our local businesses, our local comic book shops, um, you know, restaurants and all these different things. Um, you know, but in terms of our conversation, you know, these local comic book shops look for ways to support them. And if that is going out and floating them some cash to by buying a gift card that you can then redeem later on, um, you know, anything that we can do to help them right now, um, they certainly could use it. So um, that's something we all should keep in mind. Again, we'll keep our eye on this as things develop. And, you know, hopefully we get an uh, announcement from Diamond or Marvel and DC soon on when they'll start shipping again. And, you know, what's going to happen as far as getting these new stories, because, you know, we're like mid story for a lot of big stories right now, you know, with Donny Cates yeah. on Thor, James Tynan on Batman. We are like in the in the heart of it. So I know that'll definitely upset a lot of people if that all comes to a halt. But we shall see. Yes, we shall. But uh, with It'll that said, yeah, with that said, on a more positive note, we got some good news coming out of the Star Wars universe, Disney Plus to be exact, uh, Mandalorian yeah. season two. Uh, your girl, I know you're a big fan of her, Rosario Darson, I has am. been cast to play Ahsoka, one of my favorite, one, one of, yeah, one of everyone's, a fan favorite Star Wars character. Uh, she was introduced to us by Dave Filoni and the Clone Wars and all those uh, animated TV shows for Star Wars, and she's awesome. You know, she's a relatively new character, all things considered, but she's become a fan favorite because she's dope. She's yeah. got those double lightsabers and everything. She eventually gets yeah. the white lightsabers. Uh, I'm a fan, and Rosario Darson is she's she's a very good actress, and she's very likable, even above all that. So I'm very curious to see how you know she's going to portray this character in season two of The Mando. Very very excited. Yeah, I've seen some fan art even uh, of her as Ahsoka, 
and it looks mm-hmm. really cool. Uh, she's got a great look for the role. Um, right. and, and they've built so much uh, of, of Ahsoka's kind of um, mythology over the last few years through uh, both Clone Wars and Rebels. And now she's back in the new season of Clone Wars. Um, and she even made, you know, made a vocal appearance in the Rise of the Skywalker film. Um, mm-hmm. She is such a, she's become kind of a very central figure, especially to Dave Filoni's Star Wars uh, stories. Uh, but oh, even now sure. in comics, you know, she's in comics. So it's going to be really, really fun to see her get brought to life in a live action way because she's become such a huge character in the Star Wars fan, in Star Wars fandom, but we've never gotten a live action version of the character. So no, to, I'm so, I'm very curious. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious. I'm really excited. I know my kids. My kids love Ahsoka, so uh, they're all really excited to see her come to life on that. I'm just excited for Mandalorian season two in general. So that's mm-hmm. that's one thing right there. But uh, well, what's so crazy? We're gonna get her. It's gonna be really cool. Story wise, I'm just excited because you know, as Star Wars fans know, she's uh, Anakin's Padawan. Like she was trained right. by Anakin, so right. there's no way she's going to be appearing in the show, and we don't get a mention at least of Anakin. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I'm very curious to see where they're going to go with that because Anakin's Darth Vader. You know, maybe oh, I'm just so, I'm so excited, and plus I want to see I'm those like, lightsabers live action. I'm <laughs> I'm wondering if we're going to get like flashbacks, right? And I'm and I'm wondering is this going to be where maybe uh you know uh uh, Anakin flashbacks of a younger Anakin uh, with uh, Hans Christensen. Oh, is well, it Hans Christensen? The more I think about, it, I'm super excited, but I'm trying to tame my expectations because they haven't said how prominent of a role she's going to have either. Why well, she's in like one episode, so like uh, I, I'm hoping she's a main character throughout the whole season. But right. Uh, right now, she could be in like one, two episodes, and that's it, which would be. A shame because she's such a love character. I'm sure people would like her to be a season regular. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. But if if they if they don't give us some good stuff, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> I think, imagine they're gonna they're gonna bring her in and we don't get some really cool stuff with her. I, that would just seem like such a. And again, if they start doing flashbacks with Hayden Christensen. Uh, as a younger Anakin or even flashbacks of her and, and that whole, you know, because in the Clone Wars series, we get a lot of her re- lamenting uh, the fact that she left Anakin uh, mm-hmm. and he, she knew that he was struggling and she left him and she kind of blames herself in certain ways for his demise and the direction that he went. And so I'm very curious to see if we get some of that that she kind of like continues because she's going to be older in this series, obviously, you know, uh, because this is like way past uh, the 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 events of Clone Wars in terms of the timeline. Um, but there's so many different things that they can do with it is the point. And a lot For of sure. a lot of fun ways that they could like do flashbacks or hints of Vader. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what they do in the hands of For in sure. the hands of. Dave Filoni and uh, John and Favreau. Favreau and the great, uh, you know, roster of directors that they've got on this series. Uh, it's going to be dope. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I mean, I, you know, I'm just excited. <laughs> we just kind of have to wait and see, you know, where they go with it. But the fact that she's going to be in it at all has me very, very hopeful and excited. I mean, I think The Mandalorian is the best, you know, Star Wars uh, content we've gotten in recent years anyway. Definitely live action for sure. So yeah. I, I'm digging it, and I'm, I'm I was excited for season two, no matter what. So the fact that they're bringing Ahsoka in, I'm on board, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> for real. But uh, speaking of a uh, new character or characters we already love being brought back again, we got Robert Downey Jr. is apparently coming back to the MCU in yeah. one form or an, or or another. Uh, rumor is, rumor has it, it is a rumor, right? It's not confirmed, right? It is not officially confirmed, no. Okay, so that he's going to be appearing in a, did possibly be appearing in a Disney Plus show for uh, Riri Williams, uh, the new Iron Man. Ironheart, yeah. Ironheart, yep. So, yeah, so, yep. It, and it's, what's super interesting, oh, do I hear a young one? 
You hear a young one. That is that is my little two year old. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Hold on, bud. I'm shoot. I'm shooting a podcast. <laughs> home life, everyone. <laughs> and then this is and this is what working from home is. Uh, but yeah, with uh, with him coming back, I mean, it's not surprising at all. There's so many opportunities to have him come back and do cameo roles. But if he does, if if he is negotiating a major role uh, in the Ironheart series or an Ironheart series that's in development over there, um, it, you know, we'll be getting him basically as a vocal performance. Uh, mm. of uh, but there's also a lot of speculation and rumor that he's also negotiating actual physical on camera appearances in flashbacks. Um, possibly even in the Black Widow film and like an Easter egg of some kind. Um, also in the Eternals. Uh, the Eternals is going to appear in various different timelines. Um, so it's, there's a lot of things. The Loki series, you know, what they're doing there. There's so many different and, ways that they could bring him in because of what they're doing with the time travel where Iron Man will, would still have been around. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's not surprising at all that they're trying to get him to come back in and do cameo role, you know, cameo appearances and things like that as Tony For Stark sure. or Iron and or Iron Man. Uh, it's just a matter of like what I know his price tag was huge. And apparently, and this is the rumor <laughs> that his price tag has come way down to, to, you know, to accommodate, uh, especially after the Dr. Doolittle film, I guess didn't do so well. And he was, you know, heavily invested in that. So I guess that played a little bit of a role in his, his negotiation. But uh, um, I, I, I love him as Tony Stark. For me, he will always, and for pretty much everyone, he will always be Iron Man. So I, I'll take whatever they'll give us. For sure, yeah. I know, like like you said, uh, one of the rumors is he would be basically the new Jarvis for uh, Riri Williams right. and Ironheart, which I think would be very clever if they went, if they went that uh, route to have a vocal performance. But also, you know, like you said, dealing with time travel, even prequels, like they're doing with Black Widow, it's endless. You know what I mean? So if you're going to go that route, you could just have them in everything as long as it's prior to Endgame. So very, or even, <laughs> yeah, who knows? Cool. I mean, if, now they're messing with timelines, comic books, they could even bring them back if they wanted to. I don't think they would go that far. Uh, but, know. you know, comic books, I never put anything past, <laughs> past them. So... <laughs> Yeah, you can uh, never knows? say definitively, but that would be right. – I, I can't imagine him even be willing to do that. I mean, I think it would – I think even more so than that, it would anger a lot of the fans because the, I think his ending was so good and so full circle, how he mm -hmm. literally started the MCU and then he ended that massive event. That was like the most perfect, you know, outro you could have given uh, Downey. So just on that alone, I would be mad, mad if they actually brought him back and he wasn't just appearing in uh, prequels and flashbacks, but, you know. Comic books be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of uh, crazy, though, Marvel's got the comic book community in a little bit of an uproar right now. With uh, <laughs> it's it's a very controversial uh, title right now, to say the least, amongst fans. With the announcement of their new Warriors book and a whole new lineup of brand new characters that has the internet talking to say I'm the buzzing. least uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> and when i say talking i mean not, not good in a good way for the most part yeah yeah um so new warriors is you know an old marvel book it's an old team uh thrasher and a bunch of other characters have have been on the team but now we got a whole new lineup of all new characters that they've introduced um and a lot of these characters seem to be characters that are very much in line what Marvel now was doing, where it's definitely the whole, uh, it's di diversity, bringing a lot of new uh, characters from all walks and shapes of life. And, you know, the internet <laughs> is uh, responding to it. Yeah, for me, this, this takes what they did in Marvel now and like puts it on steroids. Uh, this For is sure. some next level on the nose stuff uh, that mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not sure what they're doing. Uh, I'm not sure what they're hoping for from the book. Um, mm -hmm. but, I mean, there's the, just, I mean, just to, again, just to put it in perspective of what we're talking about, some of the characters' names are like Snowflake, Safe Space, uh, uh, Trailblazer, uh, Trailblazer, uh, B Negative. 
Um, and this is about a, a character who is like a vampire Morbius type character um, who, uh, you know, you know, is kind of a rebel because they just want to be different and unique and this sort of a thing and wants to defy, uh, you know, cultural stereotypes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a lot of really on the nose stuff. Um, For sure. That, you know, I'm going to be real curious to see how that plays because again, you can say whatever you want about comic books, but the comic book audience, um, in large part, they, they like a, they love just good stories. And that includes a wide array of diverse characters and characters of all backgrounds and types and all like that. As long as it's good storytelling, it's going to sell. Um, mm -hmm. What it can, what the comic book uh, community tends to reject, however, is pandering. Um, For sure. And, this book is so on the nose with so many of these things that it just reeks of pandering. And that's why I think it has it's the most disliked comic book trailer video ever put out. <laughs> As of right now, today, it has something like 137,000 thumbs down and dislikes. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. 157,000 dislikes. Oh, 157, excuse me. Yep. 157,000 dislikes on YouTube uh, in contrast to only 3.8 thousand. Just under 4,000 likes versus 100 and almost 60,000 dislikes. That's a sure. huge statement from the combo community. I personally don't, you know, Marvel now, we know sales-wise and just even the reception from the comic book community wasn't received, you know, too well. That's just, that's just the fact, you know, okay. if you go back and look, you know, it, a lot of people, especially the diehards who are going to comic book shops who, you know, that is your audience. We're like, nah, bro, give me like th my Thor back. Give me my cat back or whatever, you know, character they changed at that time. Uh, so just from a business standpoint, I'm very curious to why they're, you know, it seems like they're doubling down almost like it's like they're ramping Hard up. So I don't, I don't know, you know, <laughs> what what they're thinking there because, you know, just by the like ratio on that video, you know what I mean? Where because who's watching this video? Comic book fans. You don't have, you know what I mean? Comic book exactly. fans are watching this video. So, exactly. So the fact that three thousand, three and a half thousand people liked it, and one hundred and fifty-seven thousand people disliked it, that's a pretty good gauge of what your sales are going to be right there. So right. you know. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and again, you know, that's where uh, it falls for me. Like when it it falls very much into the camp for me of like, what is Marvel hoping to get from this? Like they have to know that this is not a book that's going to sell gangbusters for them. It's not mm -hmm. going to perform very well. And so, is it just is is making political points and social, you know, social points? Are they that focused on that, that they're just okay with losing money? Um, because they're just like, hey, this is, we're advocates for these things and we're going to put our, 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 you know, our brand and our dollars on the line to just, because we believe in these things that strong. And if that's the case, you know, great, more power to you. You know, that's, you know, <laughs> this is America. <laughs> you can do that and, you know, go nuts. But I can say for me, from a business standpoint, I very much, it's like, you have to know your audience, for God's sake. Well, you got to yeah, know that... your demographic. And you, this is, they're catering here and pandering to such a very small segment uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of their demographic that, you know, and that's not to say, look, if you like this book, if you want to read this book, then awesome, more power to you. That's not the point. The point is, is that there, there's a lot of people that are going to look at this and go, that's that's over the top and or yeah. just kind of disinterested i'm very curious you know money talks that that's a saying for a reason right so i'm very curious to see how long you know marvel or he's gonna go before they're like okay we're not getting the sales we wanted no matter what you know message or everything we're trying to push it's not going to matter at a certain point because if a business a business is only there to make money and if you're not making money it doesn't matter what message or point you're trying to push. The money is going to talk because you need the money to make the business and world go around. So I'm very curious to see, you know, what sales are going to be for this and, you know, how long it's going to last. We know Marvel's been pushing Captain Marvel for a few years now. She's got like, I believe, what, 
10, six, five different titles over the past few years. They keep relaunching and relaunching it because, it, you know, it'll get, you know, a few issues in and sales aren't up. So they're like, let's try a new creative team. So, you know, I don't know how willing they are to like push, you know, all this kind of stuff and see, you know, what their headspace is, what their headspace is, but we're going to find out. So, you know, yeah. time will tell, but if it's we know really anything, interesting. If we know anything based on that YouTube video trailer, uh, the comic book community as a whole is like, nay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, so the, thing, we'll and see. Again, I, the thing that, you know, of course, we're going to hear is, you know, if the book doesn't perform well, you know, you know, ideologues are going to run around with their hair on fire screaming. It's because of racism. It's because of bigotry. It's because of this and because of that. And my answer to that would be, no, I'm sorry. It's the storytelling. I'm a firm believer in no matter what story you're trying to tell, saying you're cool or showing you're cool doesn't mean you're cool. The, literally, like, the definition yeah. of cool is just being cool. Don't yeah. say it. Don't show it. Just do your thing. And in that moment, it, it's, just, it's just cool. You know what I mean? Cool people don't yep. go around saying they're cool or, like, look at me. Look at this. I have to say it aloud. You're just cool. It's, you have right. that swag about you. You know what I mean? Like, even, like, with fight scenes and stuff, some of the coolest fight scenes, like, the one I always think about is uh, that fight scene with Winter Soldier and Captain America in uh, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier is when Bucky's like, you know, doing that cool blade thing. and He does that really cool, like a dagger spin and catches it like right. it was a two second real cool shot. They didn't, yep. you know, they didn't they didn't really focus on it much. It was just it happened real quick. But it was so yep. awesome because of how nonchalant it was. You know, it was just like, yeah, it's just a thing I do. You know what I mean? And that's what I think a lot of storytellers are missing. It's like. Being cool and, you know, telling good stories isn't saying this is cool and new and exciting. It's just mm -hmm. doing it. Just do it. Yep. Don't promote it as such or anything. Just make good. If you make good content, no matter if it's movies, stories, TV shows, whatever, people will read or watch it. Just make good exactly content right. and put that first and foremost. So that's where I stand. <laughs> I, exactly. That's exactly right. I mean, that really everything you just said is really at the heart of what I what I mean when I say it, it's because of the storytelling. It's the storytelling is the central part of all of this. And when you're this on the nose with your, it's like having a, watching a movie where the entire movie is just ex expositional dialogue. Right. right? And sure. they're just telling you everything and you, they're just talking down to the audience or whatever, where they're just treating that either. They just don't know how to tell it in a way where the audience can kind of come along for a ride or whatever the reason is. Uh, you know, you wind up coming out of there just feeling like, like, what did I just, nothing, you know what I mean? I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't go, there was, I didn't go on any kind of an adventure. I didn't go on any kind of a journey in this story. I just watched a bunch of people tell me a bunch of things, you know what I mean? And that's very much what it seems like this book is where it's just going to just be very preachy and it's just going to be very in your face about, you know, who, you know, whatever particular political points or whatever that there are social points that they want to make. Um, and the reason I say that is, especially when you look at the characters, even how they're designing the characters, how they're naming the characters, how they explain the characters and the reasons and the motivations for the characters in the trailer itself. It's just like, like, how is that going <laughs> to, yeah. like, how does that, how is that going to translate to any kind of an exciting story that you're going to want to follow? Unless again, you fall into that very specific camp ideologically. You know what I mean? If you fall into that camp and you're like an advocate yourself and that you're very passionate about those things, then yeah, mm. that's the group that this is, is, you know, this book is going to appeal to at least initially. Uh, but again, even it's like, how long is that going to last? And how many people are that, is that going to be? Because most comic book readers, we're not going to comics for our, you know, uh, to, you know, to be saturated in, you know, some sort of, po you know, political campaign or, you know, social, pro you know, campaign or some. We're going to read good stories, just like you do when you pick up any good book. You know, or you sure. turn on any good movie. You're looking to be entertained and and have good stories. So, I don't know. Maybe well, it'll I'm be, very maybe curious. It'll, maybe it'll surprise us, and it'll be like uh, it'll be a great comic. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You know, you know, read it, see where it goes from there, and uh, see how uh, the majority of people, you know, like it. If they gravitate towards it or not, because again, the sales aren't up there. You know, it's only a matter of time before we get a new creative team, or they cancel the book, or relaunch it, or what have you. But with that said, I think that brings a close to our very first podcast, the uh, Qu quarantined edition. <laughs> yeah, the quarantined editions will roll on from our, yeah, from they our will. Live, live from our homeland.
and we should have said that earlier. Obviously, we hope the audio and video is, uh, you know, at least decent quality. But given, you know, our both our individual at home uh, internet connections, we are at the mercy of our internet providers. Yeah, that is that is definitely one thing that I will mention is the video, the video and audio quality is going to be a little bit tougher uh, as we do this because everyone is on the internet, most namely. Uh, all the young people and the kids that are usually at school during this time for sure. are streaming and playing video games and doing all these things. So it's putting quite a strain on uh, the infrastructure, the internet infrastructure. But but also it's you know this has been a this is also the the, the first iteration of this because um, this week has been a little crazy making the tra transition from the studio to home. Oh so for sure, I'll, I'll have a different set. The next time, this is my this is what I had to do today. But <laughs> yeah, this has definitely been a learning curve for me because uh, you know, just having to figure out like how to make things look good in a in a room that wasn't meant to be shot like a studio. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's you and that's not usually struggle. what you do. You usually have to be <laughs> a couple other guys that like set all these things up, so you're having to kind of like deal with phone calls. I'm like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm the pretty you're face. <laughs> I'm the pretty face that's not so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I but think, with that, I think it's going to be fun. We're we're going to do some fun stuff over the next uh, over the next couple of weeks. You know, we're we're going to do some Instagram lives and some, some more social media stuff than we usually do, um, and then we'll keep this stuff rolling. But uh, it's going to be fun. But with that said, we'll see you guys next time when we talk about all things comics.